hello hello and welcome 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 to my youtube channel i'm medical microbiologist Gwendolyn halley and you are welcome today we'll be talking about oral sex oral hygiene and also the diseases that can be gotten during oral sex and if you should spit or swallow during oral sex i'll start by defining what oral sex is oral sex is when we use the mouth that involves the lips the tongue the teeth to st stimulate the genitals of a partner now there are three types of oral sex that is from the mouth to the penis that is fellatio the mouth to the vagina that is conilingus and the mouth to the anus and that is anilingus it's good for us to know that infections can leave from the mouth to the genitals and from the genitals to the mouth that is in both male and female and the microorganisms that are being transferred either from mouth to genitals or from genitals to mouth are bacteria fungi and viruses sometimes we can have parasites yes if the person uh, uh, is doing anilingus that is with the mouth to genitals and uh, to the anus and the anus to the mouth so that is what could happen <laughs> so we'll look into the mix that exists presently concerning swallowing and spitting during um, oral sex. I would like to say that during oral sex, there's seminal fluid that is from the male female and also semen released from the male that's during ejaculation. Now, a lot of people think, or a lot of people think that when you swallow semen, actually it's rich in protein and it's so good for your body. No, that is wrong. It is wrong because semen is made up of sperms, sperm cells and body fluid. That's all. So I really want to debunk that from our thinking to think that you need to drink enough semen to be healthy or it adds to your beauty regimen. Some people say if you put it on your face, it will add to your beauty regimen. That is so false are 12 diseases that we can contract by oral sex or through oral sex and the first is herpes just look at the slide and you see it's caused by the herpes simplex virus it's a virus and it's normally found at the borders of the mouth and it spreads through oral sex real good it causes some tiny fluid filled lesions called sores and also fever blisters and most times it doesn't have symptoms the second is gonorrhea, or in this case, since we're talking about oral hygiene, uh, oral gonorrhea, and it's <clears throat> also known as pharyngeal gonorrhea, caused by the neresia gonorrhea, and it's a bacteria. It causes sore throat, redness in the throat, fever, swollen lip nodes in the neck, flu-like symptoms, and difficulty swallowing. It's normally treated with um, antibiotics. Now, I would like to say for oral herpes, that is caused by the herpes simplex virus, viral infections really don't have any kind of cure or something or treatment. You normally just take... Um, medication to suppress the symptoms that's what normally happens and our next is oral syphilis caused by the triponema pallidum bacteria and it causes sore like uh, sores called changrias on the lips the gums the tongue the inner cheeks and the back of the mouth it's also treated with antibiotics we also have the next is chlamydia that's also known as pharyngea chlamydia. It's caused by uh, the bacteria chlamydia trichomatis, and it causes sore throat, fever, fatigue, mouth sores, swollen tonsils or limb nodes that's at the back of your mouth, and white spots at the back of the throat, and sometimes no symptoms at all. And sometimes you just have bumps on the tongue. 
And our next is oral hep hepatitis B and C. Now, for hepatitis B, the symptoms will be fatigue, dark urine, weakness in the body, jaundice, and muscle pain. Hepatitis C, you have loss of appetite, itchy skin, fluid um, build up in the abdomen. That means you have a swollen abdomen constantly and uh, also bleeding very often, very frequently. You just be bleeding. Uh, most times if you get a little cut or a little bruise, you'll be bleeding excessively or when you bruise easily. The next is HIV AIDS, which is caused by the human immunodeficiency virus. And it causes reoccurring infections, weight loss, fatigue, body weaknesses, sore throat, reoccurring uh, um, uh, immune problems like cold, fever, and all that. So this is something we need to look into. Our next is oral human papillomal virus. And it's caused, it causes lymph nodes, a large lymph node at the back of the throat, sore throat, oral, <coughs> constant ear aches, trouble swallowing, constant sore throat. Remember I mentioned that viral infections like also the herpes simplex and the human papillomal virus and the HIV AIDS, normally you just take uh, a medication to suppress the symptoms. Normally, they are not really treatments on the market for viral infections. And in this case, a human papilloma virus, it, um, uh, it causes like warts. You can also have warts in the mouth. And this is one virus that is very common, very common around the genitals around the genitals of both male and female. Now, the next is um, particularly for those who practice anal, uh, uh, anal uh, to mouth uh, sex, that is from mouth to anus and from anus to mouth. That is the oral sex from anus to mouth and mouth to anus, known as anulingus. You have the enteropathogenic E. coli, that will leave from the anus into the mouth. And when it gets into the mouth, it goes directly into the intestines and it damages the linings of the intestine. It causes stomach cramping and vomiting in most cases. You have Shigella also. Shigella is also a, um, a microorganism that leaves from the anus to the mouth. And in most times, it also leaves the mouth into the human gut and it messes up with the intestine, the lining of intestine, causes a lot of vomiting, causes a lot of stomach pain and cramping. We have the next as Gandia. Gardia. And that causes vomiting, um, stomach ache, cramping of the stomach, and diarrhea as well. Now, this is what, this is particularly for those who practice um, um, anilingus, that is from the mouth to the anus and mouth to the mouth to the anus and anus to mouth. The next is very common, very common with both male and female. Now, this is candida abucan, that is oral thrush caused by candida. This is a fungus, and I'm telling you. This is very rampant, you know. And one of the things that we notice when we are doing a lot of uh, swaps on the mouth is a lot of people have bad breath. They have a lot of lesions, mostly white lesions, at the inner cheeks, the back of the throat, and the mouth. And in most times, most uh, infected individuals have white tongue. Their whole tongue is white and most times are gone. Now, sometimes a lot of people will take a lot of mouthwash like Listerine, uh, uh, Colgate to be able to wash that off, but it doesn't solve the problem. That's, this is the most common infection or microorganism that is being transferred during oral sex. That's because many women are prone to it. 
many women are prone to it. Now, this is just to say that before you start having oral sex, if it's your husband or your wife, go for blood screening, get tested, get swaps, you know, go for a, 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 a blood screening. In the case of anulingus, this is something that you cannot really do blood, uh, blood tests for because that is the inner passage for waste and if the waste you have pathogenic and uh, 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 pathogenic um, uh, uh, e coli shigella sometimes you also have uh, 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 salmonella you also have other parasites that are being passed out through the anus so if you're doing uh, anal sex just be ready anal sex or oral sex that is particularly anilingus just be ready that you will constantly be having this kind of problems with your abdomen because you'll be normally trans transmitting microorganisms from the anus into the mouth now i also want to say it's not okay for you to just meet a male or a female today and you begin to have oral sex with them in fact get married before doing this because most of these uh, infections I have mentioned today don't have symptoms that, that show up in the first one month of, of, being, having con of having contact with an individual. It takes some time for it to uh, uh, manifest and become, especially when uh, it leaves from the primary uh, stage to the secondary stage. So this we should note. This we should note. And if you're married and if you notice that you have changes in your body, whether male or female, if you notice that you have bumps on your genitals, do let your partner know and get screened. And it gets treated. It gets treated. Something, an infection like chlamydia is rarely known. And most women only experience that uh, uh, whether they're having pain, uh, uh, pain during sex, men have pain during ejaculation or pain during urination, but it's not something, and it's not something that you will know when you have gotten in contact with the uh, uh, bacteria immediately. It's mostly in the secondary stage that you notice that you're having pain during sex and pain during urination. Now it goes to the last uh, uh, point of today: Should we swallow or should we spit out during oral sex? Um, firstly, before I go in answering that question, to prevent all the transmission of all these kind of microorganisms and infections which I have mentioned, it is good to use a condom for the male, the male use a condom, and the woman uses a dental dam on her genital so that it prevents, you know, the, 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 trans, the transmission of uh, uh, transmission of infection from mouth to genitals and anus. And if you're doing anulingus, also use the dental dam. Uh, the dental dam. This is also important. So for if for the question, should I spit or should I swallow during oral sex? First thing I want to say, swallowing is not dangerous. Swallowing seminal fluid is not dangerous because remember your saliva is body fluid as well. Seminal fluid or semen are body fluids. And uh, we have body fluids like sweat, saliva, uh, 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 semen, uh, uh, seminal fluid. So it's just the same. It doesn't really have anything. If you have gotten tested with your partner and you are not doing um, anulingus, then you are fine. You can swallow if you have gotten screened and you guys are okay. No viral infections, no fungal infections, no bacterial infections. And fine, swallowing is not dangerous. Swallowing is not beneficial. It doesn't add to your, your, your diet or your nutrition. No, it doesn't. It doesn't at all. Another point is, if you spit out, it's up to you. It's you spit out. And I think swallowing should be an, your personal uh, decision. No one should force you into swallowing seminal fluid or somebody else's body fluid. It's the same like kissing. Some people don't like kissing and exchanging uh, saliva. So that is all I have to say concerning this topic. 
and stay tuned for more if you were inspired and enlightened by this little talk do share with those that you think can benefit from this and don't forget to give a thumbs up and turn on the notification bell for more juicy juicy health content and please do subscribe because your subscription will go a long way to growing this channel stay blessed